All right, so I really don't need to say much more about this polydarium except for like, wow, I surprised the hell out of myself. I don't know where I come up with this, these ideas. Don't mind my shoes. Hang on, let me. Yep, that didn't work. Um, but uh, yeah, I, um, I look online, I do research, I obsess, and then I come up with something that turns out like, like this. I figure my cat would really enjoy watching all the fish. Um, and this is my tank of terror, honestly. Um, I don't know what exactly makes it a polydarium, but I left one inch between the surface and you know the lip of the tank, the, the rim. Um, just because if that was a determining factor and everybody wanted to fight me on it and say, hey, this isn't a polydarium, or uh, however you want to pronounce it, um, I could be like, yeah, it is. It's just very low on the land portion, but there is. And I created additional land portions, which kind of creates this whole, you know, look of, uh, you know, roots and tree structures kind of coming up out of the water all these caves and caverns in the uh, in the main tank and then uh, going up to like uh, what I imagined and envisioned in my head as like uh, like uh, uh, creeping plants coming down a tree you know all these are very low light loving plants I am using everything from the center one is a 65k uh, compact fluorescent to 5000k um, uh, LEDs which gives it this really nice shimmery look you're gonna get a reflection of my body here but it gives you that really nice um, shimmering in the water LEDs do that fluorescents can't um, yeah I'm not sure if metal highlights can either but they might be able to I got a couple prayer plants that I just picked up from my local uh, you know floral store you can you can like milligers or wherever you know whatever your local plant shop is some pothos that i got in a pot and i just broke it up into different sections um, i got the compressor i got the anubias i'm not sure what species of anubias this is and i'm sure that's a different species than that but um this is the terror tank and the reason this one's getting dubbed the terror tank and I'm gonna be splicing a few of these videos together is because today of all the days um, among having already Buenos Aires tetras um, some guppies uh, eight fire mouths and two Jack Dempsey's which are believed to be both be female um i added three green terrors and two true festes or red terrors so this currently has become the tank of terror but the terrors were added absolutely last the red terrors especially because i was um especially concerned with them uh just harassing all of the other tank mates. But honestly, the Buenos Aires Tetras are the largest in the tank currently. Everybody else is below, you know, that two inch mark. And they're all relatively slow growers. And the Buenos Aires Tetras seem to keep everybody on their toes. They're a semi-aggressive Tetra. Um, they're found in the Central and South American region so they they can kind of hold their own and they're a bigger bodied tetra and I think as far as raising up these Central and South American cichlids the fire mouse you know and etc um, that uh, they really can kind of give them a run for their money and disperse aggression evenly throughout the group especially since the Buenos Aires Tetras aren't going to do near as much damage as some of your larger species like the Jack Dempsey or even the Red Terror. 
But um, that's just my take on it. That's my thought. I mean, this could be a crapshoot and it could totally go south. Um, I know I got two of the Red Terrors, the True Fast Days. If one of them turns out to be male, it will definitely be taken out of the tank. If they both turn out to be male, they will definitely both be taken out of the tank. Um, that, that would just suck really, really bad. Like really bad. I'd be super broken hearted because they're a huge uh, wheel on the color spectrum for this tank and uh, trying to go with that central South American feel. But yeah, I just really love how it came out. And in a future video coming up very, very soon, I will show you how to make these Babylon style lights. Um, they're Babylon style lights not the babylon light if you want to get the babylon light i'll put a link in the description below you can spend anywhere between 140 and five six hundred dollars on a true babylon uh, plant light and if you got the money good for you and i'm sure it will come out way 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 better looking if you have professionals making light fixtures um, for you but if you're on a little bit more of a budget and you want to purchase three, you know, which could potentially cost up to $1,500 um, for extremely cheaper with a little bit of ingenuity and DIY, I'll show you guys how to create those lights. What's going on YouTube? This is Mr. Crawling's coming back at you with a entirely new build. This is my 90 gallon polydarium and I'm really stoked at how it turned out. I'm not sure if the camera is focusing or, but anyway, uh, yeah, it. I, I I really like how it came out. I had an old 90 gallon laying around and stand. I went ahead and um, had to re touch, sand it down, touch it up, paint it, stuff like that. Um, I ordered a couple sponge filters. Those bad boys are rated for like 120, 125 gallons each, something like that. And we built some uh, Babylon style lights. I went and collected some natural driftwood. I purchased about almost 40 pounds of the Dragonstone. And we have a ton of inhabitants in here and inhabitants, inhabitants, anyway, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the point is, I love this tank. Uh, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot of thought going into it. All right, so without it trying to catch too much glares, I got all the lights on it. And uh, as you can see in here, this is kind of my tank of terror, which I, I'm going to, splice in here at the beginning but there's one of my true fest day is it gonna get it uh i can't get my camera to, there we go it's hard to get my camera to focus so i got true two true fest days in there i got uh three of the green terrors i got two jack dempsey's as well um, like there's like 12 guppies in here. I had, I have tons of them and, uh, I ended up getting six of the Buenos Aires Tetras. I have eight of the fire mouths, which I love. I really, really love that sick with sick lid. It's super personable and, uh, they just, they're always, they, they act as a great dither fish, uh, or dither fish or however you want to pronounce it. There's both the fest day together. I don't know why they're doing that. I really hope I don't have a male. I would love it if they were both female because that would make it really easy for me to keep both. But uh, I really don't want a male and I do not have any breeding plans for these guys. Unless they just happen to be really placid because they're in such a heavily stocked tank. As you can see, the Buenos Aires Tetras are extremely entertaining always active great dither fish along with like all the guppies and stuff like that surprisingly the guppies haven't started getting taken out yet but i'm sure it will happen at some point 
Um, yeah, let's uh, let's choose. All right, so I went with Dragonstone. Why did I go with Dragonstone? Well, one of the biggest reasons is um, I really wanted to hide some of that the sponge filters some more. I didn't want them as a parent without. Um, infringing their ability to still absorb a lot of nutrients out of the water and get a lot of um, flow to them. Um, actually what the Dragonstone is carrying, covering up and laying on top of is some six inch, uh, that one's a six inch elbow under this side I believe and then over on this side I have a six inch uh, Y chamber type thing uh, it's not the PVC it's the black one um, that it, it it's just a really nice it sets up like a cave and then in the back there if you can see I got a couple more elbows and, and things like that there's one of my green terrors I just love these guys these are awesome fish the green terrors I actually saw lip lock one time, two of the three I saw lip lock and then they kind of like, they backed off the fast day, really have not messed with anybody and nobody's messed with them. They are, I don't know what's going on with that, that's weird, but as you can see I use some of the dragon stone over here as structure, creating a lot of like unique uh, different shapes and angles, drawing the eye upward. Um, along the, these uh, pieces of driftwood and uh, up to here and I left about an inch off the top I was concerned with doing an open top polydarium on this 90 gallon as uh, you know fish potentially jumping out if they were being chased or harassed constantly and so far, my theory with heavy uh, leaf or plant cover, it has caused uh, less of an ideal situation for the fish to jump. Of course, they aren't as large yet and they're not being as harassed because there's a heavy concentration of them and the, the aggression is dispersed evenly and there's peaceful fish in there as well and, you know, there's Central Americans, they... Central and South Americans, they tend to have a little bit of a pecking order. But, uh, yeah. So I've been getting a lot of questions on the aquarium group that I am part of on Facebook on how I built these paludariums, or these uh, the light fixtures, these Babylon lights. And basically what I did was I went ahead and chose a bunch of low light loving plants here let me go ahead and let me kick on this light so I chose a lot of these low light loving plants and if you can see, I just basically ran them up to a hook. And then this is a braided cord with a switch. And then, well, uh, there'll be a whole build series. I'll go ahead and just build one for you guys so you can exactly see how it's done. But uh, yeah, there's a, don't worry, there's a drainage layer. It, uh, it works out pretty good. There's a drainage layer and everything. But yeah, there we go. Um, we have the two center or the two side lights are running the uh, LEDs. I think it's like a five or six LED construction. And it's basically just a spot lamp. The center one, and those are five, uh, yeah, 5,000 K um, color spectrum. And then the center one is a CFL, or compact fluorescent, 
and that's running a 6500K just to kind of broaden that spectrum. And it's also uh, intentionally set up higher than the other two so that some of that light that is being spread out will be collected by some of these low light loving plants. And the really nice thing about this is because it's almost like a hydroponic setup where the fish waste in the water is used to be recycled uh, so that the plants can you know absorb the nitrogen and and um, you know the fish waste and um, use it to grow so it's kind of I don't know I scratch my head at all this because I, I know in theory how it works but I don't know uh, a lot of the scientific terms of how it's working but uh, here it's simply like for this potho pothos or pothos or however you want to pronounce it back here um, I simply just uh, washed the roots off really well and draped it in the back here behind that piece of driftwood and if we go below um, you'll see the root structures actually in the bubble column which is very similar to how you would grow hydroponic plants um, by and then add fertilizer to the water so that they're getting plenty of nutrients and oxygen to keep growing the plant and this thing's taken off like crazy um, over here I got this um, prayer plant and I'm trying a couple different things here just to see how the prayer plants really go I'm trying it in a little pot that it came with and I just basically wired it up and put it in the side here just to kind of spread the plants out so they had plenty of room to uh, not like kind of encroach each other and also create more of a top cover and this plant was looking terrible when I first got it and uh, now like it had like one bloom on it and and the leaves were all curling up and stuff like that and now all the leaves like that leaf there or right, where are we at here this leaf here was completely curled up this this leaf was worse these are opening up really nice and you can see the leaves were much much darker green with the reds and now we're getting these lighter greens with the reds and and you can see I got new growth here and um, actually some more flowers coming and new spikes and so that's that's very um, exciting to see that and uh, yeah I just make sure I keep a little bit of the roots out of the water to make sure they get plenty of air now on the flip side of that on this one I, I used a little bit of wire and I went ahead and bound it to that log now this this wire is for gardening it's a rubber coated so it doesn't damage the root structure and I wanted to place it as close to the top naturally as possible and this was one of the uh, parts of the branches that actually kind of curves up and out of the tank like a root structure on a tree and I kind of wanted to simulate that so I put this prayer plant here and this thing is this thing is just going nuts I mean it was pretty big already this was like one of the I got only got the two and this was the bigger of the two and it, as you can see there's two on it so I could have easily split these up but I didn't want to damage too much of the root structure especially knowing that I was going to be um, stressing it out and putting it through this but I just love look at the colors on these leaves it is gorgeous and I got tons like this I don't know if I can try to get the camera to focus here but um, we got new blooms going here um, I, I got a couple new blooms down there you can see in front of that leaf um, it's doing really well I definitely think these plants are responding up here on this poth pothos or pothos um, the the roots are staying a little dry but I think these are a really resilient plant and if you notice over here let me go ahead and come around this side um, 
these these like these are really thin new leaves this is probably grown within this day um, yeah these have just these these are ones are like just opening um, and all of these leaves are ex looking way 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 better than they they were when I first um, got them into this water solution with the fish waste I'm rambling I'm, I'm talking mostly about plants you guys probably want to see the the polydarium, the 90 gallon tank, which is awesome. Um, there is a 200 watt heater in here. I'm just excited about the whole build in general. But uh, let me go ahead and get back over here. Yeah, so you guys, this build has been a ton of fun. Um, I wanted to use a lot of, uh, I wanted to use a black background. I wanted to use a lot of dark substrate. Um, I chose uh, Anubius to be in the planet or er, in inside the aquatic section for the fish simply because they tend to be a thicker more robust plant and the leaves tend to taste bitter not that Central and South American cichlids enjoy the taste of plants some tetra species do and some other species of fish tend to like the the taste of plants but anubias for the most part are supposedly bitter and the fish usually leave them alone i'm just simply testing this out i bought three and then i had another one in my pea puffer tank that i took out i definitely know that those are for sure different species so I'm excited to see how those LED spotlights act on that. As you can see probably in the video, uh, the reason I chose the LED spotlights for their penetrating power in a deeper 90 gallon tank. It gives this beautiful, nice shimmer. And anybody who's ever kept saltwater aquariums will know that LEDs uh, give your tank that nice shimmery look. And I wanted it to replicate the sunlight and in Central and South America in a river system with uh, roots and rocks and logs and caves for all these beautiful, colorful, vibrant, active, attractive, personable pet fish um, that, that you could keep. And, and they're just amazing. Um, Palmer. I'm going to go ahead and throw your link in the, in the description below. He's got some very unusual, awesome tanks. He's extremely knowledgeable. He runs uh, a few different Facebook groups, uh, Oscar Keepers and, and Guppy Keepers. And I don't know if he's doing a Goldfish Keepers, but he started doing a series on those guys. And he's making monster tanks and he just bought a bunch of acrylic tanks and stuff like that. But he really inspired me and, 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 and pushed me on to setting up my 90 gallon again, which has been just sitting in my garage forever. And I've always loved fire mouth cichlids. I, I, I will always love fire mouth cichlids and central and South American cichlids. Um, the reason I didn't go with Oscars is because they're just going to get way too big for the setup that I want and it's definitely going to dwindle my fish population. These guys will all top out around, you know, you're, well, anywhere from three and a half to I think about 10 inches on the Jack, Jack Dempsey's and the uh, Feste. I think that's like the biggest those guys get. Maybe even the Green Terror. The Green Terror might get 10 inch. I think on average, most of those guys hit around eight, but I'm not sure. So I will have to thin the herd here. I, I, I definitely think the guppies will be gone at some point. Someone will snack on them happily. Um, the Buenos Aires Tetras, I don't know. I really enjoy them, but I mean, if it had to, if I had to pick, it'd be tough. I really enjoy them. They're like little piranhas. These things go nuts at feeding time. It is, it is a blast. The only thing is they definitely do 
caused a little bit of a challenge for the Jack Dempsey's, the two Jack Dempsey's, they actually have their own little spots picked out on either side of the tank. But, um, and the fire mouths seem to be pecking at a little bit of everybody, but there's so many of them, I'd probably thin some of the fire mouths. I'm hoping a couple of them pair off and um, maybe I'll get a couple uh, breeding pairs of those and uh, just enjoy that part of the hobby for some time. Donate them to a local fish club or pet store that I move, that I that I like to frequent. But uh, yeah, that's that's kind of how I did it. I used just bits and pieces and a strong obsession for creating these very unique builds, and um, in conjunction with wanting to create this beautiful art, uh, I wanted to, uh, I just, I wanna create the best, most naturalistic type of environment for my pets as possible. And I, I think some of you would agree that I can tend to go a little overboard. But anyway, uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, Please feel free to voice them. A lot of people were very interested in how the Buenos Aires Tetras were going to hold out in the long run. They are semi-aggressive Tetra. But anyway, you know what? You guys post that down below. I'll make sure to get back to you. And until next time, if you keep it, keep it crawling. And in this case, keep it cold-blooded. I'll talk to you soon. Later.